In anguish, they say the criminal justice system failed their loved one, who was a daughter, sister, and mother, after a long history of abuse allegedly at the hands of her ex-husband. She ended up dead, found shot in her car, and police say her ex-husband pulled the trigger. Our Kelly Rule spoke to the heartbroken family. Kelly. Well, Jason, one of the most troubling aspects for Gladys Coriano's family is that her ex-husband was in court for a court appearance for violating a PFA eight days before he's accused of killing her. At that time, he had an open warrant for his arrest, but it wasn't served. He walked out of the courtroom that day. And again, eight days later, Gladys was killed. She was a, a, a short little lady with the biggest heart ever. She touched many lives. Uh, she, she loved everyone. 52-year-old Gladys Coriano was a helper, her family says, which makes it that much harder for them to understand why she didn't get that help in return when she needed it most. She had paper trail of evidence of, of everything. She had everything, and they just failed her. On January 20th, Gladys was found shot in her car outside her home on Hartle Avenue in the northeast section of the city around 6.30 at night. Philadelphia police charged her ex-husband, Adriano Coriano, with her murder. Gladys's family says months before she kicked him out, filed a protection from abuse order, put up cameras, and changed her number and reported everything Adriano did to police. Now, police say their detective bureau is assessing and analyzing their role in the events leading up to Gladys' death. Philadelphia police declined it on camera interview, but provided a timeline of events. Her ex violated a protection from abuse order back on October 26th, allegedly showing up at Gladys's home and starting a fight with her son. And on the 31st, he's accused of breaking in and pinning Gladys on the floor and threatening her with a knife. He was arrested for the first incident November 1st and was released the next day on $25,000 bail. The warrant for the Halloween attack was approved on November 9th, but Adriano was never arrested on those charges. On January 12th, he pled guilty to the first PFA violation and walked out of the courtroom with six months probation, despite having an open warrant for the other PFA violation. The same day, Gladys reported to police he'd been messaging her while on vacation in California. Police then went to the DA for a third arrest warrant. Six days later, the DA followed up with police the same day Gladys was shot and killed. She handed our, our criminal justice system a, a layup, uh, just an easy way to, to go and, and capture this guy, and uh, they, they dropped the ball. God knows how many other women are living in a similar story. Philadelphia police say they never had a good address for Adriano. Her son disputes that, saying Gladys gave it to investigators eight days before she died. That's where police picked him up and arrested him after Gladys was murdered. This was an egregious mishandling uh, of her case. And tragically, Gladys was actually not living at home at the time of her murder. Her son tells me she stopped by there to possibly feed her cats, and that's when she was shot and killed. Her family wants some accountability and does not want this to happen to anybody else in the city of Philadelphia. Meanwhile, District Attorney Larry Krasner is questioning why Adriano was not arrested at that initial court appearance for violating a PFA. Philly police again say they are assessing this situation. Shana. A lot of disturbing details there, but great reporting. Thank you, Kelly.